for joining me today. Uh, we've spoken a couple of years ago now uh, about the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning and um, you've said that it will cause a shift in quantum finance. So, you know, half a decade later, um, we've seen a lot of technological advancements. Um, what is the impact that you're seeing in quantum finance right now? Wow. So first of all, let me say I'm so impressed that you remember all our conversations from the start. This is amazing and it's so nice to be back here at Quant Mind. So thank you so much for having me here. Um, and yes, you're completely right. It's, it's, it's exactly what I said. And we are observing quite a significant shift, but not only in Quant. We're observing this shift throughout everywhere how artificial intelligence is quietly reshaping our lives. Ah. So I guess the question is, what are the areas that are not <laughs> affected rather than which are? So what are the most important discoveries now in quant finance, do you think? I think there are quite a few, but there's some element to that which connects with large language models, which is really a significant shift that we can work with the generative models tied in hand in hand with large language models at the moment, which just simply gives this opportunity of working with generative models to a so much larger audience to work with. And handling and managing that is, I think, something that we need to think about very carefully. With large language models being having such a big impact on quantum finance today, what do you think will be the, having the biggest impact in the next five to 10 years? That is such a difficult question because things are starting to move faster and faster. So looking ahead five to 10 years is incredibly difficult, I would say. I think you know, these developments of better and better predictions with large language models are incredibly exciting. But I also think that hand in hand with that goes this incredible environmental impact that these large language models are creating. So, you know, handling those things parallel to one another, not limiting the progress, but actually making sure that this is going in a sustainable way is important. At the same time, I think a, a significant shift in development are these sequence to sequence type of um, modeling techniques which I think we're going to see a lot more of in the future. So what you're referring to is the, uh, is the handling of the data and I the so. environmental impact of that physical handling of the data, as well as, as, well as um, the techniques that um, people are coming up with. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like it's really exciting. So can you tell me more about your project moving forward as well? Yeah, I think my projects are reflecting this kind of idea. I think maybe just to go back to the question that you mentioned earlier and tie that in with what I'd like to focus on, there is this significant shift from looking day to day in, in daily data, from now going towards looking to sequence to sequence type of modeling and that being rooted in um, many types of modeling techniques at the moment. This is actually quite exciting and that I'm very much looking forward to working on. I'm very excited to see a movement of different communities closer to one another. There's the Cohen community who is increasingly adapting machine learning techniques and there's the machine learning community or the quantitative finance modeling uh, community they are all moving closer and closer, so I'm really excited to see people working hand in hand along these lines and see what the future brings. Amazing. Blanca, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me.